the file system mounting. So once we have the file system, then we can use the file. File system itself sometimes is a separate hard disk drive, where it can be the part of the it's a independently it can be the software file system to manage the, to use the persistent hard disk drive. The, to where you can store the data and the information. So which means uh, to use in the uh, your operating system, to use the, such a file system in your operating system, we need to have the mounting operation. So that is a mount. Mount means the, uh, this uh, B is the existing file system. So if we have the file system, so we can connect. That connection, that operation is called the mounting. So we can, uh, this is uh, our operating system that has also the file system. So this is uh, another file system that we'd like to use in the uh, operating system. Uh, the file, this is the file system. At that time, you can uh, specify the location where the, this, uh, the where the, uh, you, This is uh, existing uh, the file system in your operating system. For example, this is a users, and users has the, the directory. Under the directory, you can have the file or the subdirectory. But uh, if you bring the another file system, like the, this one, so to use the, this file system, you need to connect to your the operating system, the, under the file system. At the time, you need to specify the uh, mounting place. Then you can connect using the mount. The command is the mount. So you can uh, use the mount, the operation, the command, then the, this will be the move. And connect to here, and uh, hide, and then uh, it will be like the this one. So without uh, realizing that this is the, another uh, the file system, you can uh, seamlessly uh, use the, uh, the another file system with your current file system. This is a mounting operation. If you want to know the, how many the file system are the connected, the mount, so you can use the mount command. So for example, You type the mount, so you can see the. This is the my virtual machine, uh, so you can see the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The five six are the mounted, connected in this the virtual machine in this computer. You can find the. You can type the same command on your the compute engine. You can see the how many the persistent disks are connected. Okay, so for example, here the mount. It's not always the only the hard disk drive. It can be CD-ROM, DVD-ROM, the any the uh, storage the file system can be. So for example, here the we can see that some of them are read only, some of them are the read and write. And also we have the temporary file system as we have seen the last class. And also the process the uh, special. There are a lot of the special the files file system connected. Or the efficient and secret operation of your the operating system. Okay. So uh, it's a called the mounting place, whether it's the mounting the point. So you need to, this is just uh, nothing but the directory, so you can uh, use that directory for the mounting point. This is another example of the mount uh, information. You can also, as you can see, the, it's a little more. So you can mount the remote file system, so which is called the network file system. So we will quickly see the network file system. So remotely, so this one is connected to the. This was used for the long time ago. Actually, the when we, uh, the when a student, the this is a, the name of the CP. It's a computer science server, which is the retired already, but the, we use the computer science the server. So our department uh, managed our own the Unix server for uh, practice and uh, email checking and so on. So at the time, the once when user uh, the login the with the UV ID and password, 
This is the in the James server, which you may you may not the, know the, this name of the server. So we have the it's kind of a common server. So when you store the something data in the jail, so it can be whenever you log on any computer at UV, it will be the mounting. It's a network mounting. So this is uh, the mount the operation that you can check. Also, the using the DF command, which is very popular, you should know that when you are using the Linux and the uh, Unix like system, the DF command is used a lot to check your file system statistics. So it shows the name of the mounting point as well as how what is the capacity, uh, the what, how many of them are used, how many of them are available, and the mounted or the, the mounting point. So minus k means it's a uh, kilobyte the unit. So you can easily check the whether whether it's a user for, to check the capacity, whether it's a, my file system is the full or not. So as I, mm, so this most of the operating system nowadays the uh, multi-user system, which mean, which means the multi-user can access the same file. It's a shared file. So to do that, to differentiate, uh, to share the file, that we are going to use the user ID and the group ID in operating system. As we have seen the a lot, the, we do not use the name of the file name of the directory, name of the user. Instead, the operating system use the ID. So for example, for the security check access control, the operating system use the user ID and the group ID. So in other words, when you create the user using the uh, user add command, or the, for each operating system, there are different the command to create the user. When you create the user, user ID is assigned. Then user name is used for your the convenience. So for example, if you create the username the D, the A server, and the create the username B in the B server, then the you can the mount net remotely, which is called the network file system. So using the mounting command, so you can connect the A server file system file to the B server. So both of them are both of them has the lead user. However, you cannot access the file, even though you create the file in this server. So unless you create the user, the same user ID, which means, so you have the A server, you have the B server, you create the J lead. User, and also you create the lead user. Then the lead create the a.txt file. Then this one is the mounted to the B server. So from the B, you can see the file the A using network file system. Okay, then the using the network remote file system, which is called the network file system. So this using through the this one, the, you can uh, share the a.txt file. However, even though you are using the same user ID name, user name, but you cannot see the this file. You cannot. You are not the owner of the this file un, unless there the user ID. For example, is the one hundred and the one hundred. It should be the same user ID. Operating system file system check only the this ID number, not the user name. So this is a really common mistake. So I create a file, the A server, but it's not available in the other, even though I'm using the same username. You need to check with your administrator whether your ID is the same, identical. So even though, okay, this is the, the JK, it's a different the username. As long as you have the same user ID, it's yours. Okay, so user ID is, so using the user ID and the group ID is the same thing. So using the user ID and group ID, we can share the file. At that time, the to share, there are different ways to share the, to mount the remotely, the file system. So conventional way is, nowadays not many people are using FTP. So you can use also the FTP to 
the share the file remotely. So FTP has a put command and the get command using the, this one. You can also the list the file through the network. So using the FTP. But nowadays, most of the such a network file system is implemented based on, as we have seen before, for the process communication. What is the most popular one nowadays? How do you communicate? between and among the processes. It's using client and server, the SOCKET program. So client and server, they are using the TCP IP. So network file system, most of the network file system nowadays, they are using the client and server, the architecture, which means they're using the TCP IP. So we can uh, uh, share the file. So, for the network file system, we are using the, there are a variety of the, such a network file system. The, each operating system provides the different the network file system architecture, like the LDAP, you probably heard about the, such a thing from the Windows, it's an active directory. So these are the old, most of them are, are the, those are called the distributed the name of the service. So network file system, which is the most popular, to share the file uh, along the, the remote server. The most popular one is the version 2, nowadays the version 3. The reason is that version 2, old version of the MFS, is uh, that there is a huge issues in the security. So it can be the easily hacked or abused the, uh, the uh, uh, because it's uh, just implemented and used a lot without the uh, uh, considering the security part, but nowadays the two uh, this uh, critical. So new version, the NFS version three is uh, more uh, reliable. So you can check the what kind of version you are using in your server. Like the version two or well, version three. In case of version two, it's better to upgrade to the version three. I'm not going to explain details of the such a the uh, uh, Network file system. Then the more details about the, uh, the access control protection or the security part. So we have seen the operating system use the file system use the user ID and the group ID for to protect the file. Okay. Then uh, what kind of permission we can consider in for the file? So we can read the file. We can write the file. Then in addition to that, so we can uh, execute the file, okay? So those are the very uh, popular operation. And in addition to that, we can think about the append the file, append the data to the file, or delete the file, and list the file. However, the append, delete, and list are the part of the read and write, right? Append is a writing, and the delete is also, you should have the writing permission. Uh, and then list is the read. So we can consider most of the operating system and file system consider read, write, and execution. The permission uh, for the security purpose to protect the file. The read and write and execution. And what combination of this one? Windows use the same thing. If you go to the uh, the file permission by right, right click the any file and the go to the property and check the uh, the security part. Then the permission part you will see that it's a combination of the these three the uh, the access the control. So so what we see is such a uh, the protection of the file in the uh, file system based on the these three the uh, access the type. So. Unix like the system use the is the three permission read, write, and the execution. So we have the IWE. So three different uh, the access permission for the file. Then as we have seen, there are different types of user. One is a user ID, user, another one is a group. So group means, uh, I didn't explain the details of the, what is a group permission. Group means the, I can give the permission for each user. So you can do this one. So you can access the room one, you can access the room two, and you can access this one. But uh, if I have the thousands student, I need to give the 
same permission to the old thousand. Instead, so I can create a student group, then give the permission to the group like the access room one and room two. Then assign this the assign each student to the group, the student group. Okay, so that is the group. So if we can create the group, then the like the student we can assign, assign, assign the uh, this group to the student one, student two, student group. Then instead of providing grant the permission for each user, then we can the grant the permission to the group, then it will be automatically the grant granted to the uh, the user who belongs to the same group. This architecture is used for most of the operating system, including the Windows, Windows administrator group. So if you have the if you are you are in the administrator, you will get all the permission of the administrator or the guest. If you have the guest perm the group, if you belong to guest group, any the permission that are assigned to the guest will be assigned, automatically assigned to the user. So this is a user and the group. There is another group of the user that is the public. Public is for everyone. Even though we do not provide any permission, the, the public is for others. Sometimes it's called the others, anyone. So even though the user is not assigned to the public, automatically the user, when a user is created, it will be assigned to the public. It's like the owner, group, and public, such as the relationship. So we have the three different uh, groups of user, types of user, okay? So how many different types of access? Read, write, and execution, and how many different group, user, and group, and the public other. So there are how many combinations? Three and three. So there are total nine different types of the access control, the permission. So because of that, for example, if you take a look at this one, any when you list up the all the file, the all the information list the file, you can see the first column is for how many bit? How many bytes? One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, plus one. So there are total ten. So first the letter is to indicate whether this is the directory or not. It's the first. Then the next I W X. So instead of E, so I W X. So read, write, the execution. X means the execution permission. So read, write, execution. For what? The first three is the owner. Then there is the, there are three I W X. This is a book group. And next three, last three is for the others. So if you want to give the, all the permission to the all the group of user, then you can give the permission like the IWX, IWX, IWX. Okay? Which means owner has the read, write, and execution permission. And group has the read, write, execution. Where is the group? In this case, the UB step is the group. Any UB step has the, this permission. And others, even though you are not in this group, you are not the owner of this one, if others has the, this permission, you will get anyone get the, this permission. I, W, X, read, write, the execution. What, what if you don't want to give the right permission to the others? Then you can the take out right permission. So dash hyphen means no permission in this case. So what about this one? The hyphen, no right permission for the this. Okay. In case D is this is the TMP is the directory. So directory is the, the set aside we will discuss. So suppose that this is a file, TMP file. Okay. What kind of permission? 
this file. Okay. J E L E owner of the this file can read, write, and execute. Then group UB step. Any user who belongs to UB step, the group can read and execute, which means cannot write, cannot update, cannot change the file. And any user in this system, who are not the JELE, who are not in the UB step, can read and execute. Okay? So this is the, the access control used in any Unix and the Linux like the system. Windows is a slightly different interface. Basically, it's the same idea. Okay? So, then, what about the, this one? Let's say this is a file, uh, the main, main file. What does that mean? IWX dash 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 dash. Only user owner, the JELE, -E, can read, write, and execute the file. No other. The user, no other, the group can do anything. So this is the access permission. So whenever you see the file, sometimes you cannot open the file. Probably it's existing. There exists a file. Then you need to check the access permission. IWX, IW, who is the user, owner, who is the, what is the group ID, the group of that file. Okay, then one more thing. However, this notation is for human being, not operating system. Operating system is a little bit lazy to convert the, this one the, to the real the permission. Instead, operating system understand the, this permission. Instead of the IWX, we can use the code. So code means, so we will assign the Four, two, one, four. Read is the number four. And the W is the two, and the X is the one. The reason is that two to the power of zero, two to the power of one, two to the power of two. Okay? Binary. Four. Then add up all of this. So if you add up the all of this, how, how many? Seven. Seven. So instead of IWX, so we can use the 7. The idea of this one, using one byte number, we can represent all three. One byte of the data, we can uh, represent all three permissions together. So for example, if you have the, this permission, RX, X is 1, 2 to the power of 0. Dash means no permission, so there is no data, 0. And the R, 4, 2 to the power of 2, 0, 1, 2. So plus, plus, how many? 5. five. So 5 will indicate R plus X always. It's a one-to-one -one mapping. And what about the dash WX? This is the 0 plus 2 plus 1, means 3. So 3 means always? Right and execute. What about the six? This is a six is the using binary number. This is the only way. Right? Is there any other? No. This is the only way. Two to the power of two is what? Read. Two to the power of what? Right. And no execution. So one through seven. Using one through seven, we can represent. R, W, and X combination. Okay? So, we have the operating system used this binary code to represent access permission. So, for example, the, this one all together, this is a 7, this is a 5, this is a 5. So, R, W, X, R, X, R, X is the same equivalent as a 755. Five in the binary form. Then, how can you use the, this one? There is a command. If you want to set up, decide the access permission to the specific file, 
That is the CH mode command. You can use the CH mode. I think the data at the beginning of semester, the, when he is doing the uh, exercise lab, he explained about the change mode. Because sometimes the, if you do not have the, the uh, proper permission, you cannot edit, you cannot read, you cannot open, you cannot execute the file. So change mode, 755a.txt means so IWX, RX, RX, which means all permission to the owner, the read and execution permission to the others who at the group and the read and the execution permission for public other. Okay? What about this one? Change mode. What does that mean? Seven a uh, six four four. Read and write for yourself. Uh, read for the group and read for others. So for me, it's only read. So if you want to set up read only file for group and for public, for four. And uh, for the owner, even I don't want to execute the, this file, then the six, four, four. Four, sometimes you need for security purpose. So in, sometimes accidentally you can run the program. So six, four, four. So you can anytime change the permission using change mode command. There are a variety of the way, different way to set up. Like the, you can give the X permission to the other, like the, this one. You can directly use the IWX symbol to the other or group or user, but it's, uh, I think that you can understand from the manual page if you understand that this. This is more popular. Okay? So when I <coughs> use the Unix command, the Unix version first time, the, my supervisor, the, my manager told me the only the 7556. So it takes a, a year. What the 7, 5, and 5 mean? The, each of them means the, the, what kind of permission. I just memorized 755 means or permission to the user, even from experience. He never explained about the, this. So, but the, you can understand the, what is the, this. Okay, then one more thing. If you see the, this one, there's a D. D indicate directory. Is it possible to execute the directory? No. What does it mean, the execution permission in the directory? One opinion is you can execute the file under the directory. It's too strong, right? Too powerful. So there's no execution on the directory. Instead, you are able to list the under the directory. So execution means in the directory, so you can you are able to list up the search. You can list up the file under the directory, which means if you have the execution permission, read write, it makes sense. You can read the, uh, the directory information, whether you can write or whether delete the directory information, but execution means if you are able to search the under the directory. So that is the uh, execution in the directory. Okay, that's pretty much enough. Let's see the example of that. So, what does it mean, 761? 761 means seven, read, write, execution. Four, owner. Then six means four plus two. No other way to make the six. It's only four plus two. Four, read. And to write. So read and write permission to whom? Group. group. And the last one, what? One means only execution. So others can uh, execute the file only. So that is a permission. If you want to grant uh, this permission to the game file, change mode 761 game. There are different ways you can search the uh, manual or the uh, instruction of that the change mode. It's a free country use, uh, used a lot. Mostly, if it doesn't work, you change the permission like the 777. So, do not give the full permission to the any file. 
because it can be used for hacking. Okay? Because that has uh, something execution permission. If uh, somebody the embed something other program inside the 777 permission, the file, it can be used for the to access other the information. Okay. There are a couple of things more, interesting ones. So let's see the real example of this in the in my <coughs> virtual machine. So I list up the TMP slash TMP directory. So you can now understand what does it mean the IWX, 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 the directory. That is all the permission for all any types of user. Okay? Then R, R, R means read only, read only, read only. It can be used for something read only information. But if you see the permission of the top one, the current slash TMP directory, the dot one dot means current directory. Current directory is the TMP. So t what is the permission of the TMP? The top <coughs> one. It's a directory first. Okay? So it's a first the directory. Then R W S means read, write, and list. Execution means the, the list of search for the directory for owner. So no problem. The next three are W, X. Other, the group has the same permission as the user. And what about the next three? R, W, w T. So, what is the T? It's not here. I W, X. Yes? Transfer file. <coughs> permission to the transfer. It's a special permission for the, it's called the sticky bit. It's a sticky bit. Can you guess? So this is a full hint, it's a TMP. Only for the root directory. Root directory. So, what, when do you need uh, usually the TMP? It's a temporary purpose. So, which means mostly you allow the permission. So, like the, for example, TMP directory, otherwise it cannot be temporary. Many users, many applications, they would like to use a TMP directory. So, it's a slash TMP, either IWX, 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 which means it can be used for any purpose, even he used a temporary, so this is a common area. So he put the, his the own lunch, but somebody can take because it's temporary. You can do anything, right? Because it's a temporary area, the IWX, IWX, you can delete, you can take, you can read, you can execute anything. So it will be the any file under the TMP directory can be accessed, can be executed, you can change the code. So it will be sometimes a serious problem. So to avoid that, so if you set the, this directory as the T, it's called the sticky bit. If you, so we usually call the.